Shadows in the Wield is a game for two players. Each player controls a party of heroes and hirelings. The first phase of every round is the initiative phase. You pull markers from a cup to determine in what order the heroes act in. This also determines when the hirelings move, but we're going to skip that to keep this short. Boreal the Elf is first, and she's going to start her turn by shooting Hanuk the Goblin. She's going to roll a number of d8s equal to her ranged combat factor, or RCF. That's three. Hanuk has an AC of 4, so you would normally need a 4 or better, but Luriel's special ability reduces the target's AC by 1 when making a ranged attack, so she needs a 3. 4, 2, 2, that's 1 hit. But because she went first in the round, her initiative ability gives her an extra die. Plus, she's next to a Bowman. Each hireling gives a buff, and the Bowman's is an extra die in ranged. And because she has an unobstructed LOS, she gets another die. That's 3 more dice. 4-2-2 two, two again! What are the odds? It's almost like I lost a shot of the other dice. Each hit scored causes a half heart of damage. Now because L'Oreal scored a hit in ranged, this triggers her bonus attack, which is a close attack. This isn't the same thing as a melee attack. Bonus attacks are always made with two dice. So our friend the Squire here, who would give her one extra die in melee, doesn't have any effect on a bonus attack. She rolls two dice against Tyne and scores two hits. Bam! Now, because L'Oreal had made that ranged attack while adjacent to Tyne, she triggers an opportunity attack from Tyne. Opportunity attacks are always resolved after bonus attacks, but work the same way. You only ever get to roll two dice. Tyne rolls double eights. If you roll all eights, that's a crit, and you deal an extra hit on top of it. So that's three hits against L'Oreal. Our elf lady is in pretty rough shape, so she decides to move next to the white mage. It might be an enemy hireling, but it still gives off its buff. Once she moves away from Tyne and Hanuk, she's going to trigger another opportunity attack. It doesn't matter who rolls it, since it's only going to be two dice. A six and a two, another hit. L'Oreal's on her last leg. Because she was hit while moving, she has to stop. But let's pretend she didn't get hit and kept moving, so she still has one full heart left. And in fact, because I was distracted by my cat, she doesn't end her movement in one of the four orthogonally adjacent squares that would allow the white mage to heal her. Sucks to be L'Oreal. Now it's Tyne's turn. She's next to Morrowcalf, who does double damage when he hits a melee, so she's going to move away. But wait, why doesn't she trigger an opportunity attack? because Tyne never triggers opportunity attacks. That's her special ability. Tyne decides that she'll do a ranged attack against Morrowcalf. She normally rolls two dice. She's next to the Bowman, and she has an unobstructed LOS, so that's four. So we have a miss, a hit, a hit, and a miss. Now, Morrowcalf is wearing dodge boots, which lets him disregard one hit in melee. Since it's a ranged attack, he doesn't get that benefit. Hitting in range gives Tyne a bonus attack. Far versus a different target. A far attack is like a ranged attack, but because it's a bonus attack, you only ever get two dice. And the target of that attack is going to be L'Oreal. A one and a five. L'Oreal's down to a half heart. Now it's Marocat's turn. He is rubbish at ranged combat. He only has one die in melee, but if he hits, he does a full heart of damage. And if he hits, he gets a bonus attack against the same target. Marokov moves next to the Squire, so he'll get a second die for his melee attack against Tyne. Two misses! What is this nonsense? When you miss in melee, you also trigger an opportunity attack. One hit, one miss. But wait, says Marokath, what about my dodge boots? Sorry man, opportunity attack isn't the same as melee. Last turn of the round goes to Hanuk. He only has two hits left. He's next to a white mage, which would heal him start of next round. But because he's going last in this round, he's going to regain a full heart anyway thanks to his initiative ability. And there's a treasure chest nearby, and you know how goblins are about treasure. Before he moves, he takes a pot shot at L'Oreal. One hits all he needs, and he gets it. L'Oreal's toast. But don't cue the Crying Hobbits. This triggers her defeat ability, which heals the other heroes in her party. Hooray! But it's still Hanuk's turn, and since he scored a hit in range, he gets a bonus far attack against another target. The only hero left on the red side is Marokath, and nope, nothing. Hanuk moves over to the treasure and pulls a loot marker from a cup. He gets a magic sword, which lets him cast a fire spell. He might just do that next round. At the end of the round, there's a cleanup phase, and Anook's initiative power triggers, bringing him back to full health. Shadows in the Wheel is the packing game for Yaw Magazine number 5. You should buy it. Thanks.